Hi everyone, I'm Sandy Lene. Welcome to Psychic Creations. As you can see, we're going to have a very fun show for you today. As you know, we have asked a few of our special guests to return on to another show to demonstrate just how they create their wonderful pieces of art and their skillfulness in those artistries. Joanna Bailey of Scarecrow Joe's Studio has been on the program once before speaking about and showing her fabulous creations, which are a huge seller, especially <laughs> at Halloween time. As promised, we invited Joanna back for another Psychic creation show to explain to us just how she creates her fun and endearing figures. So please welcome, once again, the owner of Scarecrow Joe's studio, Joanna Bailey. Yay! Hi! Hi, Sandy. <laughs> Thank you so much for being on the show. This is awesome. Thanks for having me again. Oh, I appreciate it. It is our <laughs> pleasure. So what we are going to do is I totally enjoy watching an artisan in the midst of their work. So I am going to hand over the show to Joanna Bailey so she can explain step by step how she creates her fun sculptures. All right, great. Joanna? Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. So today, uh, actually before we get started here, um, just want to talk a little bit about the studio. So Scarecrow Joe's studio is about two years old. We specialize in Halloween sci-fi and fantasy art. Um, most of it. I would have to say 99% of it is paper mache. Okay, oh, okay. so um, so that's kind of the specialty. Um, everything is one of a kind. You know, we don't mass produce anything. Everything's sure. handcrafted. Um, so we make anything from jack o' lantern sculptures. Um, we make huge things like this guy behind us here. This is Fester Rotsworth. Um, we make pirate skulls and busts, and we make haunted house miniatures. We make some wall sculptures, so that type of thing. Wow. Um, one of the the one of the best selling item mm -hmm. um, that we make here at the studio are jack o' lanterns. Oh, so wonderful. I thought it would be a great opportunity to show you step by step on one of the processes on how I create a jack o' lantern sculpture. Ooh, great. And anybody can can do this. You can follow this, and anybody can do this, even children. So you know when. You can watch, and I'll give you pointers, and I'll tell you about the materials, and hopefully you'll take it upon yourself to, to try to make something like this. Yes. So there are several different kinds of ways that you can create a jack-o'-lantern sculpture. The easiest way is by using, starting off with a balloon, just a simple balloon. Um, this is a nine-inch, where it could be blown up into a nine-inch round balloon. For the sake of this videotaping, I didn't blow it up that big. We're okay. going to keep it small and simple. Okay. Okay? So, you have, I have that. I blew that up. And then what I've done is I have created what is called paper mache paste. I'm going to tilt this up here so you can see it. Paper mache paste is a very simple formula. It is made with white flour, um, the real cheap bleached white flour where all the nutrients are gone out of it, that type of flour. Oh. And then you want to use some um, white glue, like Elmer's school glue, anything like that will work. Mm -hmm. And water. And you want to kind of mix that up to, it's the consistency of a uh, thin, like, pancake batter. Oh, okay. And that's it. That's, yeah. that's the simple, it's a very simple formula for paper mache paste. Um, so that's the first step. So I've got a little paste in there. And then beforehand, um, I have shredded up or made cut up some uh, newspaper strips. Mm -hmm. Okay, I just have a few of them here for the demonstration. But I usually have a giant box. So I will spend a couple of hours sitting there and shredding oh. this newspaper. Oh, because sure. I, I use it for everything. Okay, It's the first step for everything. So what you want to do is you take... One at a time, take a strip, you're going to dip, dip it in the glue, the paste there, squeegee it off, and I do kind of like a crisscross thing. Okay. So an important, it's important to do one at a time, okay? You don't want to do two at a time, you don't want to do three at a time, because you want it to be on there evenly. Good point. Mm -hmm. All right, 
And so, and you can you can make these, cut them in different sizes. This is a smaller balloon. So I've got these smaller pieces. Now mm -hmm. this stuff is goopy. It's sticky. Um, I have an I have a nephew. His name is Aiden. He just turned eight years old, and he hates to have his hands dirty. <laughs> he would absolutely just abhor this. Right? Oh. <laughs> so I always kind of think about him when I'm doing this because. I don't particularly enjoy it. It's not my favorite part of the process. Sure. Because <laughs> it's very tedious and it takes time. Oh, yeah. So when you crisscross it, you're going to, eventually you're going to have layer upon layer. Okay. You're going to do this for the whole balloon. Okay. Right. Flip it around, you're going to do the whole balloon. Um, let me just wipe this off here. Mm -hmm. So that's basically, that's the first okay. step of the process, creating, that's, this is what I call a basic armature. So for sculptures, you always have, have to have an armature to put the clay on. This is what we're going to use as the armature. So we'll get that out of the way. That's the first step right there. Okay. Once this hardens, okay, it, it'll take several days for this to dry, okay? Oh, okay. Um, you want it to dry completely. Once it does harden, then the fun stuff happens, okay? Ooh, okay. <laughs> so this was the balloon. Now, it's hard as a rock, pretty much. Well, and I haven't even put the clay on it. Oh, okay. okay. So you get to this yeah. point. To make it, you know, look like a jack-o'-lantern, what I have done, well, first of all, I drew a little face on here. So you draw your little pumpkin face on there. Make it scary, make it happy, make it sad, whatever. Draw that on there, cut it out. I use, you can use an X-Acto knife. You can use a serrated steak knife. Um, you, I use a box cutter. That's sure. my favorite thing. Mm -hmm. Cut a little hole in the bottom too, okay? Um, then once you cut that hole in the bottom, you'll hear the balloon in there pop, and then you'll be able to just take that balloon right out of there. You don't want to leave that shreds of the balloon in there. You'll take that balloon right on out of there, and then I stuff it with newspaper um, while I'm doing the sculpting. Mm -hmm. um, it just gives it more, um, what's the word I'm looking for? So it doesn't collapse, mm -hmm. you know. Makes it more solid. Maybe? Exact solid. Thank okay. you. Okay. <laughs> I'm using big words here, yeah. okay? <laughs> All right. So to make, when you carve a pumpkin, it's, it's a vegetable, okay? It's organic. So they come in all different shapes and sizes. And when you carve a pumpkin, it is three-dimensional. So if I didn't carve out the eyes here and hot glue strips of cardboard, it wouldn't look three-dimensional. It would just look flat. Okay. So by doing this, putting this, hot gluing these strips, so I take these strips of cardboard, and I stick it in there, and I hot glue them into place. So it gives oh. it that illusion of an actual organic three-dimensional pumpkin that has been carved. Oh, this okay. is a good point. Okay, I love that. <laughs> now with the hot glue, you got to be careful with that. You know, I use a little hot glue gun and hot glue, and I have burned myself pretty good. It, it, it could be very dangerous, so you do want to be very careful. If you have small children, that's a step that you will want to do for them, or don't do that step at all. You don't have to. Um, obviously, with the cutting, you're going to want to do that for small children as well. Um, so anyway, what I suggest if you're going to do the hot glue, have a little container of cold water. So if you get a little on your finger, you can just put, oh, put your yes. finger in the cold water and it, it'll save you, mm -hmm. you know. It still yes. hurts a little bit, but it'll save you. Okay, so that's, that's the other step. To create the stem, I've used a cardboard tube. You can use any kind of cardboard tube. Uh, paper towel roll, toilet paper roll, the inside of that tube. Cut a little hole in there and put it in there. And that gives it the, uh, the little stem. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so that's basically where we're at right there. Now, How many layers do you think is on uh, that is all glued there? I'm gonna have to say, with the strip mache, probably at least five to six layers. Really? Yeah, five to six layers. When you're overlapping, uh -huh. you know, well, sure. you're, you're gonna get a whole whole bunch of right. layers. Mm -hmm. So probably five to six, and that's why it does take a few days for it to dry completely. Mm -hmm. Good point. Mm -hmm. During the summer, you just leave them out in the sun; and they'll, they'll dry <laughs> sure. really, really quickly. <laughs> All right, so so we've got to that that part, and now it gets really fun because now we can actually start to apply the paper mache clay. Now I make my own paper mache clay. You don't have to do this. Um, my paper mache clay, the ingredients for that are the paper mache paste, 
So what I do is I make a big batch of the paper mache paste, water, glue, mix that all up. I use a lot of this stuff, okay? I use a lot of the clay. So I mix it in a five gallon bucket. Oh, uh -huh. And I use a drill with a paint mixer attach attachment to mix all this up. Oh. Okay. So I've got my paste, my basic paste there, and I will add a couple globs of uh, ready mixed drywall joint compound. Yes. Oh, <laughs> all right. So then I mix that in there. And then I use a substance called, um, it's called green fiber, cellulose fiber insulation. And basically, it is a, what they use to um, insulate walls and, and houses. They blow this stuff in. Oh, of course. Okay. So it's 100% recycled paper pulp. Okay. Oh. So, you know, this is what it looks like. Uh -huh. You get okay. it, you know, you can buy it at any home improvement store. It comes in a big bale. Um, it, it's really cheap. It's like 12 bucks. For for me, I, that's what I do uh, because I make a lot. I use it a lot. Yes, you do. Okay. You do. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to make your own clay. There, If you're going to make like one or two of these little things, what I suggest is go to a craft store like Michael's, um, so on and so mm -hmm, forth, mm -hmm. Aaron Brothers, someplace like that. They're going to sell uh, what's called cellu clay. Basically, this is paper mache clay. All you do is add water to this mixture. Oh, that's all you do. Just add the water to oh, it. Darn. Okay. Okay. Now. Because it's already pre-made for you, and all you have to do is add water, it is a little more expensive. You're only going to get a little sure. bit of it. Um, you know, you're only going to get a little bit mm -hmm. of it, um, and it's going to cost you, for a little thing this big, it'll cost you 12 bucks. So Ooh, you can see yeah, why I just sure. choose to make my own clay. <laughs> I don't know, Michael, if you can see the... That's the difference. So, mm -hmm. yeah, this is the uh, green fiber, cellulose fiber insulation that I use uh, for my paper pulp. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, Cellu, Cellu Clay, or Activa is the brand. Um, any craft store, you can pick that up. Oh, you're great. only going to make a few of them. Sure. So that's what I suggest. Okay. So. And really, really, you know, you don't even have to apply the clay. There's, there's absolutely nothing wrong with just painting this the way it is. Mm -hmm. But in, in order to give your sculpture more depth, I like to use... I like to use the clay. Sure. So this is my, this is a little bit of my clay that I've made up here. Mm -hmm. So I mix it up almost weekly. People ask me, how do you make your clay? Okay. Um, you know, what are the measurements? I don't know what the measurements are. Okay. I just, I, I just don't. I don't measure anything. I've just, I've made, I've made it so often that I just kind of roll with it. Sure. And, I get it to a consistency that I like that's sculptable, so not too moist, not too dry. I can sculpt with it. So basically, I get it to the consistency where I can, if I make it ball, it's going to it's gonna hold its shape. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it does, this does have an odor. It's got kind of a wet newspaper odor, basically. Oh, uh-huh. You know? Okay. But, uh, so that's the consistency that I'm looking for. Okay. Okay. So this is my, my clay here, my homemade clay. Looks like... Gray Play-Doh. <laughs> it does look like, and it kind of does have the consistency of, of Play-Doh. Mm -hmm. um, I still play with Play-Doh. <laughs> sure. You know, if I see some Play-Doh, I play with the Play-Doh. Okay. I love it. <laughs> so I'm going to move this out of the way so okay. we, can, we can see this a little bit better here. Now, you can start anywhere you want on your sculpture. I like to start at the top, so I'm going to get a big glob of this. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I kind of just smush it in there, all right? Now, you can make it smooth, or you can you can leave it so that it's kind of lumpy, give it some more texture. Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. um, that type of thing. It really depends on, on what you're trying to achieve, what kind of effect or look you're trying to achieve, what your end result will mm -hmm. be. Um, pumpkins have... a they have these ridges, you know, and they have these little lines. Mm -hmm. Again, it's a vegetable, so it's an organic thing. They're, no two pumpkins are alike. They're like snowflakes. Right. So you kind of want to keep that in mind. And that's what's the, the great part about making these little sculptures, even if you, for, for kids, because you can't mess it up. You're not going to make a bad pumpkin. 
No, that's you know a good I mean? point. Yeah, that's you're not going to make point. a bad pumpkin. So basically that's what I'm doing. I'm just kind of filling this in here a little bit, pressing in the clay. And you, you don't have to use any kind of special tools for this, okay? You don't have to go out and buy any special tools. You can just use your hands, okay? Oh, yeah, okay. No big oh, deal, all right? you're making the ridges. You're making the ridges. <laughs> so you're cool. just kind of forming those ridges. Feel, mm -hmm. feel it out, you know? Feel it out. You can press, it, press the clay into the, the, the newspaper armature here that we've created. Uh, look at that. It's it's already taking shape. Yeah. That's fine. It's already taking shape. Yeah. And I mean you could put you can put bigger ridges, you could put smaller ridges. Sure. Um you could put no ridges at all. You know? You can you can take a um you could take a a, a knife, like a butter knife, and you can make it as smooth as you possibly can and just put in the little lines with the butter knife. Oh you okay. know, instead of making the ridges. Sure. Um so very simple. Now, okay. this type of clay, you're not going to get a very smooth surface, okay? You're not going to get like a porcelain type finish. It's not going to happen because this is not an oil-based clay like, you know, the kind of clay that they, if, you, if you've ever watched an episode of Face Off, uh, that show where they're, they're sculpting out um, creatures and things like that, they're using a very nice oil-based clay for that. Um, it, this is more, kind of more uh, primitive, I guess you would say. Um, so you're not going to get a porcelain finish. So if you're making something that you, you want it to be really super smooth, you might want to try a different, different product than paper mache. But you can smooth this, okay. Um, I use, I have these little sculpting tools. So there's all kinds of different sculpting tools. And again, these are things that you could pick up relatively uh, they're relatively inexpensive. You can get them at any kind of craft store. Um, you can buy them online. You know, like Amazon sells tons of these things. Mm -hmm. So, in order to get this a little smoother, there's a couple of things that you can do. I use one of these little tools here. And see, I'm kind oh, of okay. I'm smoothing it in. I'm kind of just smoothing that down. So it's going to give you a little bit more smoother texture than if you just use your hands. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yes, it is. It is. See that? Mm -hmm. um, again, you don't have to go out and buy tools for this. But if you wanted to, they are cheap. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm just, I'm just smoothing it in. Isn't that fun? <laughs> And even even if I'm, this is probably the smoothest that it's this kind of product is going to get. <laughs> okay. Okay. This is this is fine though for pumpkins sure. and Halloween type art because you want to have a lot of texture. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, it makes it look more real. Exactly. Not um, plastic items that you can buy at a store. Exactly. So it, this is really fun too, guys. I mean. You know, I really encourage people to, to make make some art, um, especially Halloween art, because, man, it's the best. Halloween art is the best, hands down. <laughs> you know, some people yeah, like to make Christmas see. stuff. But, <laughs> hey, I, I do Christmas. I do. Uh -huh. I do. Um, not quite like I do Halloween, <laughs> but I do, <laughs> I do do Christmas. Um, in fact, for Christmas presents, I give... <laughs> I give Halloween art <laughs> as gifts, so... There um, you go. <laughs> yeah. So that's pretty much that step. And what you're going to do, oh, you're going to yeah. do, you know, you'll continue on and you'll mm -hmm, do that sure. whole thing all the way down. Now, it, this, it, it's because the, some of these areas are pretty thick. You mm -hmm. know, we've got a quarter of an inch okay. clay. Mm -hmm. It's going to take a while um, for this to dry, a few days. Um, okay. So after it does dry, you can flip it over and you can continue. This can dry. There's nothing wrong with, okay, I ran out of time today. I got to go to work or I, gotta, I have to go to school or whatever. Fine. You can leave this that out. It can dry. And then you can pick it up tomorrow, the next day or next week, and you can just continue on. Good point. Okay. Not mm -hmm. a big deal. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't have to be something that, that needs to be completed overnight. Mm -hmm. um, you know... In order for this to dry more quickly, put it out in the sun. Um, but if it's like if it's cold outside or whatever, and you have your heater on or your fireplace going, 
put it next to the next to a heater vent mm -hmm. or the fireplace, or you can hook up a, a fan and uh, sit it in front of a fan, oh. and it'll dry. It'll dry a lot faster. Sure. Okay. okay? Yeah. So yeah. we've got that step there. Okay. Okay. That's awesome. Sit that guy right there. Mm -hmm. Now the next step that we do is monster mud. Okay. <laughs> now, as you can see. And some of his areas here around the rim of his hat, by the way, the hat is made uh, from cardboard. It's just a tube of cardboard. You know, I kind of made a tube out of cardboard, stuck it on there, glued it on there. Um, so uh, you can notice here that uh, some of these areas are filled in with this, like the salmon colored. Uh, oh, sure. It looks like paint, I'm sure, from. Mm -hmm. Whoa. <laughs> it looks like paint in the. Here, we'll just sit him right there. Yeah. <laughs> There we go. It looks like paint. This, this is not paint. This is what I call monster mud. Um, and I have a little monster mud here to show you. Did you title it that, or is that it's it's? Made? No, that's a common um, common name for this type of product with people who make Halloween props and Halloween art. Oh, okay. So basically, monster mud. I'm gonna get a little here. It's kind of you know kind of goopy. Oh, yeah. Um, it's not the consistency of the clay, mm -hmm. so the ingredients in Monster Mud are just two things, latex paint and drywall joint compound, the ready mix stuff. Oh, okay. You mix that together, pretty much equal parts, mm -hmm. and then you have Monster Mud. So what I've done to kind of seal these areas where the, you know, we would oh, have the sure. cardboard uh -huh. in there, right. to seal it, I put Monster Mud in here. And I use, uh, you, you know, you can use these little tools. You can use your fingers if you want. Like mm -hmm. I said, you don't have to buy anything special to do this. I have a lot of stuff, so. Yeah, and you do a lot I have of a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I acquire these things. So a little spatula like this, um, you know, or a palette knife, they call them. Mm -hmm. uh, get a little on there, and you can smooth that in there. Um, anywhere where you want to seal something. So sure. that's what I've used. Okay. Um, the reason that this is salmon colored is because... That was the color of the paint that oh. I used, the color mm -hmm. of the latex paint. So if you're using a, a, a latex paint that's black, it's going to be black. If it's blue, it's going to be blue. Okay. Don't go and get, um, don't go and order from a paint store a can of paint just to make monster mud. Always look in the, the, the messed up uh, paint section. There's always one. Mm -hmm. um, so like in, in Lowe's, for instance, in the paint department, if uh, if the people back there screw up making a, a can of paint for mm -hmm. someone, it's the wrong color. They'll sit it out and they'll mark it down to like three or four bucks. And you can get a whole gallon of paint because you don't care about the color. Yeah. You're not using it for the color. So that's just a little tip oh. on, on being a little more e economical. Mm -hmm. Okay. That is a very good tip. Yeah. So that's the monster <laughs> mud phase. All right. That's cute. So that's that for that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That is cute. So now we're at the we're pretty much we're at the point where we're gonna start to paint. Mm -hmm. Okay. Look at that. A couple of different <laughs> steps here. Um, the inside of pumpkins are an orange color. Mm -hmm. So I use a spray paint because there's no way you're gonna get a paintbrush in mm, there. True. Okay? <laughs> so I use a can of spray paint. In this in this case, I use an orange spray paint. You can use yellow. Um, and I just spray painted that, I let it out, uh, left it outside um, to dry for several hours. Um, and then, you know, it's ready to go. We're ready to paint. So m the first step is I use a primer. It's a white primer. Um, you get the water-based primer. You don't want to use oil-based because that stuff has real uh, nasty odor, okay? Mm -hmm. um, It'll give you a headache. So get the water base. It's still going to have a little bit of odor, but it's not going to be that big of a deal for you. So I use that, and I paint the whole thing. White primer. Let that dry. And what it does is it seals the clay. Oh, it, It'll okay. seal it. Mm -hmm. Okay? So the whole thing's going to be painted uh, white. Now, what I do next, I didn't actually paint this one. My little sister, uh, one of my younger sisters was, was here visiting, and she helped me out by painting doing the primer and doing the black oh, paint. Oh, cool. My sister Rosie, yeah. Um, so, Hi, Rosie. So, yeah, so then what, what she did with this, she, after the primer dried, she took some black flat acrylic paint. She painted the whole thing black. The reason for that is because we're going to use a technique called dry brushing. Um, dry brushing is 
Where's my little paintbrush here? Just gonna take a little paintbrush. So you get your paint. I've got some white paint here. A little bit of white paint. You're gonna wanna have a rag that you don't care about. Okay? So after your black paint has dried, take your paintbrush. You want to get the least amount of paint, just a little teeny bit of paint, okay, on there. Not a whole lot. So I get a little bit, and then I brush it off on the rag. See, I've already done one area. Uh-huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit, just like that. So when you get that, that all done, I know we're running out of time here. You're ready. So we've got this part. Get a little orange paint. Paint over that. And see, it's going to bring out the texture. Oh, look at that. So the white primer, the black paint over the white primer, the white dry brush, the orange paint over that. See how that works? You can use all different kinds of orange paint, brown paint, so on and so forth. Oh, isn't that incredible? That's it, and guys. I mean, that's it, that is the very simple process on how to pretty much step by step make a jack o' lantern. That is awesome. And then they end up looking like these yes. fabulous sculptures. Behind so it. there are different types. Oh, look at that! You can get creative oh, with your shapes, with your they? textures. But can I just hand yes. lift it? Oh, and they're not very heavy at all. They're no. really not. I mean, they're weighty, but they're not. Right. Oh, and look how awesome these are. Hard as a rock, too. Yes, they are. <laughs> oh gosh, this has been a wonderful demonstration. Oh, this has been fun, and it looks pretty well easy to do too. It is. Just a yeah. little time consuming, but yes. pretty well easy. Yes. This is awesome. Well, thank you so much for showing our viewers how to make your fabulous sculptures here. This is awesome. It was a pleasure. Well, it was a pleasure. You. If you have questions, you can go to scarecrowjoes.com, contact me there, and I'll, I'll answer you. Mm -hmm. um, no E and Joe, scarecrowjoes.com. Mm -hmm. Awesome. <laughs> and people can get a hold of you at that um, contact for commissioned work, too? Absolutely. Um, also on Facebook, Scarecrow Joe's Studio on Facebook, and Instagram, Scarecrow Joe's Dot Studio on Instagram. Awesome. People can get a hold of you all over the all place. All over the place. <laughs> That's wonderful. Well, again, thank you so much for well, presenting this awesome show. And I thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Cool. All right. All right. Well, now, thank you for joining us today in this wonderful show and demonstration. And if you would like to be a guest show on Psychic Creations, you can contact me at www.sandypsychestones.com. Again, thank you very much for this wonderful show, for joining us, and we'll see you next show.